What's up? This is Coach Austin here coming to you from Hyper Strength and Conditioning. And today's a fitness business post. I'm documenting, I'm kind of going over what we're going through as a business. So this is actually a YouTube exclusive. This only goes up to my YouTube. So if you're lucky enough or if you so happen to find this, that's awesome. Cool. So the topic of today, uh, the first topic I did, the first video was actually opening a business, uh, you know, before I was 30 and how that happened and all that shit. So, so this time around, I'm going to be talking about the financial, the people, the stuff that people, businesses don't like to talk about so much. Um, and it's, it's for this part is, is staying open, how to stay open. We're coming up into two years and I'm going to go more of the financial aspect of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions like, you know, how much are you guys making now? Um, are you guys profitable? What's your margins? All that shit. A lot of people, especially in the fitness space, they, they like to talk about like how much gross they're making. Um, but never really, you know, never, no one really knows about the backstory of anything. Like, do you, do you have investors? Do you not have investors? Did you, you know, did you have mommy, daddy money? Did you have, did you start everything bootstrap? Did you get a loan? Did you do all this stuff? So this video is more so for people who really want to open a gym. You're dead fucking serious. Um, and this is coming from a guy who fucking did it. I, I, you know, I was in the industry for 10 fucking years, uh, 12 years now, but, or even more, but you know, I went from personal trainer to gym owner and you know, th this is about how we stayed open. So when we first opened November, 2015, opened our doors, you know, we had a small, I got a small micro loan from the opportunity fund. I have all the, I had all this, sa like, I had a little bit of saving, not all, I had all a little bit of savings that I actually got, um, you know, stowed away. It was my, my life savings that actually my mom is, uh, she works for a credit union. So she kind of put that away without me touching it. I had to, I had to ask her to kind of give me that access so, cause she even wouldn't give me access. So that I used that money cause she wanted me to put it towards like other things like, Oh, you know, you should save it and put it towards your house that you've been. I'm like, no, 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 I, I need that money to open a business. And uh, it's a funny story because it, at the same time we were, we were doing a wedding. So it was, I was uh, also saving money for a wedding guy. So I, yeah, I opened a business and I was, we were, we were planning a wedding at the same time. So I was pulling money out of my ass. So, so my mom wanted to invite these, you know, her friends and all that stuff. And, 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 and I was so strict with the guest list, but you know, you know, you know, you know, she's like, well, if you want access, I'll give you access. I'm like, okay, thanks mom. And she goes, but you have to do me a favor. And I'm like, oh my God. So I had to, uh, invite well, who she wanted to come to the wedding. lot. So that's how I, I got access to that, my life savings to put into this gym. Um, um, I had a good amount of my clients sign up for like one year packages, six month packages, you know, like just, you know, just giving me a lot of cash up front to just get this going. I worked out a deal with, um, with the owner of weights and bars to give me, you know, give me a, he, he worked out a deal with me where I would, I would pay month to month uh, no interest cash payments for the mats for the turf for the rig behind me It was a used CrossFit games rig even though we don't do CrossFit here and that's what we did We, we I worked out deals and all that but another a, a huge part of how we stayed open You know, I'm telling you all this is the money I had in the beginning how we stayed open No joke was my wife. Well my fiance at the time like she Because I was working a job too. I kept my job. I so I used that salary to fund this, you know but the months where we came up short, she was there, dude. So my fiance at that time, now my wife, she was there. She, she's the reason HSC stayed alive for this long. Cause you know, there's times, you know, there's great months like, oh fuck, we're fucking balling. And there's some months where I was just like, oh fuck, we're short. We're short on payroll. We're short on this. We need to recover. Dude, she, she came through. Don't worry. I got you. Don't worry. I got you. And that is why I'm on this hell bent mission to be successful. So then I can buy her that house that she wants, that she wants. Not, we're not going to settle on a house. That's the thing. Like, that's my mentality. We're not going to buy, especially in San Jose, right? I'm from San Jose. So fucking the housing market is fucked right now. Um, but I mean, for the consumer, I mean, for the sellers, it's, it's fucking awesome. But, but, you know, my mission is to make that, you know, to make a million dollars in cash to make sure that I can buy her the house that she fucking wants, you know, like no, no, no half-assing and all that fun stuff so and that's another topic but but that's how we stayed in business it's like that's how i stayed in business is that i had my partner she's actually a co-owner now she's co-owner of the business 
believe it or not. And going into business with your with your wife is a little different. I, obviously, I run the show. I'm the face of the company. All that fun stuff. But you know, she does all. She does not all of it, but she does most of the finances. And she, you know, the the first. I mean, I don't know if you guys are Gary V followers there out there, but you know, yeah, the first six to the first two to six, two to five years or something. Yeah, you you barely make any money. And don't get me wrong, we made. We made a good amount of money. We've made this business a six-figure business. I can say that now. Um, it's a six-figure business within two years. We grow six figures. But I put that money back into, into the business to get more equipment. I mean, look. And you look, look where my thumb's at. That's our dumbbell rack. All right? I try, <laughs> that's our dumbbell rack. And our, our memberships aren't cheap. And look at our dumbbell rack. It's fucking pathetic, right? But that's, that's what we started with. That's all I could do. That, that's, those are used dumbbells I can get from some dude who's using it. He was selling it out of his trailer. And, um, and he sells actually used, a lot of used equipment. So, but that bench, that incline bench and those dumbbells, that's what I had for the first, these first two years uh, to train my clients. You know, it wasn't the greatest. We don't have like five to 100 pound dumbbells, but we made it work. We made things work. And that's what you have to do when you, when you keep a business open, um, obviously now I'm making another push to get more equipment in. Um, we have a little bit extra funding, um, from clients, from members, from, you know, just growing the business. But again, all that extra cash, all that extra, that, that growth. Now I need to hire another person to like help me with the front desk stuff. I need to kind of give a little bit, I need to hire a little, I, I hired, I think, this year, we hired two more coaches to start teaching classes so I have more time to work on the business, to do more things, to, to market, to do this. We even spent a shit ton of money on a marketing company um, to run our Facebook ads and all that stuff. It was like a shit ton of money. But, you know, for the last three months, and, and we stopped that because now we want to focus those funds into upgrading the gym. I mean, I think this way, yeah. We just installed this guy. So this guy, Flow Water, um, we just installed, you know, we just had this fit aid. You know, that's extra, that's extra, um, it's a little extra income, um, but it's another offering for members uh, to have. Like, oh, now they have supplement drinks. It's not energy drinks. But you have to keep thinking of ways uh, to keep your cash flow going without always focusing on, I need to drive a membership. I need to drive a membership. Of course, that's a, that's the lifeblood, right? Memberships, but you know, install upgrading the amenities of the gym to, to increase the value. Like we're going to, we're definitely, I'm definitely going to upgrade this by the end of the year. We're, we're getting a new dumbbell rack. Um, we're getting, we're get I mean, we're, we're providing more like retail stuff for people to buy. Cause that, I mean, it's, it adds to the bottom line. It just adds it. Anything helps, anything helps, especially when you're trying to keep the gym open. Um, and I didn't know that, you know, in the small business administration, a third of a third, one third of small businesses go out of, go out. They, they fail in the first two years and that's sad and that's sad, you know, and if you really want to, you know, open a gym and if you want to keep it open, you're going to need help. You're going to need help. And I'm, I'm very lucky to have my wife help me through those and still help me through those tough times where I'm like, fuck, I'm, you know, shit, I'm, I'm we're short again. Um, have to take back a look at the strategy. What are we, what are we spending on? What are we not spending on? What are we like you know, over spending on? What, what can we cut back? You know, and that's, that's typical with a business. Unless you, unless you have like, I can't really give you any insight about having seed funding or like a VC money or like, you know, we started with a $400,000, uh, grant or whatever, <laughs> or like a hundred thousand uh, dollar, you know, investment from my partner, ha ha, who's a silent partner. So he lets me do whatever the fuck I want. Like, you know, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, I would be lying, I wouldn't, not lying, but like, I, I have been approached, you know, by several people who say, you know, if you need funding, let me know, like, I'll, I'll put it into your business, I see your vision, I see what you're doing, you know, I've gotten 100, 200k thrown at me, like, hey, just, you know, just, you know, you let me know if you want to partner up, da, da, da. and I gotta admit, I am looking over those options, you know, to take it to the next level, but at the same time, this is your baby, right, like, this is your baby, so if you're gonna open your own gym, you have to treat it as such. A lot of people are always asking, especially now that I just got married, like, how come you don't have kids, Austin? How come you don't have kids? You just get, just do it. Just get it over with. And as much as I, I get it, you know, but this is my baby. And I'm going to grow. I need to focus on my baby first. I mean, so obviously, I'm not going to have kids right now. So just something, one of those things to keep in mind. Everyone's different. People fucking thrive. When they have a kid, they're fucking going. You know, I have, I have, I have one client of mine. Uh, his name's Mike. And he's a cool dude. Uh, 
you know, he was like, just have kids, dude, just do it. And I'm like, dude, this guy's intense. This guy's at another level. But, you know, some people are different. But again, again, those to keep in mind. But keeping the business open, you know, looking at all, all your options. And I'm giving you giving you what I'm going through right now. Like this is genuine, no bullshit. I'm not selling you no plan. I'm not selling you anything. I don't, this is just me trying to help whoever is watching this, who was thinking about wanting to open a gym and, you know, wondering what, what the little insights can, you know, can do and can be, you know, I'm giving you that insight. Am I, am I like the, the millionaire gym owner and all that stuff right now? Not yet. Keywords yet. Um, but I am going through the struggle. I'm going through the process and I'm fucking enjoying it because, oh, it's such a cliche, cliche thing to say, but yeah, at the end of the day, this is every dollar that was made here was manifested through, you know, this vision, this vision of like, you know, like I'm going to open my own gym one day and think about it. When you open your gym, every dollar that comes through your doors is from your idea and from your drive, from whatever you created. Imagine that, like you didn't, you don't depend on a check. You depend on your grit. You depend on you. And I always say, you're, you're a wolf, man. Like you're, you're learning how to hunt and you're hunting and you're learning how to hunt better and better and then you create your pack. So you have a wolf pack and you guys hunt together and you guys survive together, and you guys thrive together. And that's how you keep the business open. You know, and sometimes it's going to get tough, you know, it, oh my God, like, yeah, I'm comparing myself to other, these other gym owners who, I don't know their backstory, but like, you know, they're killing it too. And they're, they're successful as shit. And there's members who compare me to them and there's prospects. You'd be like, well, I can pay the same price if I go to here. And it's like a fancier gym and all that. You're going to get that. You're going to get that. You got to drive through it. You got to drive. Cause if you believe, if you believe in what your vision is, cause my vision is, you know, I have one, I have the only like geekdom type gym in San Jose, in Silicon Valley, in Northern California. Um, there's a really good gym that's very similar like to what we do in SoCal, West Hollywood, Nerd Strong, and everyone that's heard about them, they're doing great too. Um, but that's my vision, like that's, you know, how, you, that's how unique it is. And, and people don't know, they're starting to slowly learn about us now, but, um, but again, it's how, how, how you exude, how you, how you kind of just let people feel how 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 you kind of portray your message and and what your your core you know core values like your core value of what your gym's going to be that's how it's going to that's how it's going to that's how you're going to reach the people that you want to be a part of your gym i'm telling you right now i mean i have a buddy named uh there's chandler who does you know, uh, backyard barbell. There's Steve who does anchored strength and condition. They're like a mile away from us. You know, there's San Jose barbell with with uh, AJ and Rambier, like all that stuff. And if you guys are from San Jose, you guys have heard of them. But you know, these guys are killing it too, and they have their own little niche. And people are like, "Well, aren't you like worried about competing with them?" Sure, yeah, you compete. Well, we all compete with each other. We're, we're a business, but at the same time, you can't let that take over your head. If actually anything, I work with them. Like. I, we collab with a lot of stuff and it's great because we all grow together. If anything, it's us little guys versus the fucking Globo gyms, like fucking city sport, 24 hour club sport, uh, <laughs> all that shit. Club one. Um, you know, so obviously we all, obviously I can say like we, as business owners, we're all competitive. We're not going to be like super fucking like, I'm going to fucking kill you, man. I'm going to fucking, but it's, it's great competition. Competition is awesome, dude. Cause like if, if like, if I see Steve doing something crazy and, and Ram producing and Chandler's doing something that, that makes me want to go like, fuck, we can do more. And the quality, the quality of the gyms get, 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 get better and better and better. And that's, that's the goal is you want to provide quality service. It pushes you. It's like Goku and Vegeta, right? Vegeta ain't going to be shit if Goku's not around. Like, Goku pushes him. That's why Vegeta's like, I can't kill him. You can't kill him. You can't kill Goku. I need him around. I need him to push me. So <laughs> that's, that, that's the thing. So, so again, with the finances and all that stuff, um, you know, when you're off on your own and you're doing your thing, um, you know, I'm lucky enough to have my wife bail me out of certain situations. Some of you ain't going to be as lucky. But I quit my job a year ago you know, a full-time salary because I just needed to focus on the business. And some of those times where I was short, she would come in. Before that, I had my second, I had my full-time job doing this gym. 
And when those times where I had short, I had my salary to cover it. I had that cushion. So, and, and, and also, she actually, um, be, when we were in the beginning phases, she actually let me dip my wife. I'm giving so much credit to my wife right now. She needs so much credit because, like, you don't understand how much she puts into it. So, um, you know, uh, in the beginning stages, during, like, going into the wedding, we had a wedding fund. You know, it was all cash paid and all that. And she let me dip into it to, to help pay for some of the things for the gym. And it's like, dude, you know, like, forever in debt, you know, till, till death do we part, all that fun stuff. But now I'm like, I'm so like, I'm so dry, uh, driven to like pay her. And I'm slowly, you know, paying her back and all that fun stuff. But it's just, it just gives me that much more of a drive. Cause like, fuck yeah, I'm going to get you your house. I'm going to get you all this stuff. Da, 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 da. So my tip is that, you know, some of you or most of you may not have a partner or someone to, like help bail you out, bail you out of those situations. Um, keep, Keep the full-time or keep a part-time gig to help give you that cushion or, you know, sign up more personal training gigs or whatever. So that, that's, that's how it is right now um, as a business, as a business. Definitely more things we need to work on. I'm improving on a lot of things. You know, we're trying to, like, scale back on certain things and develop more programs and evolve as a gym. And that's what's going to carry us to the five-year mark. You know, we'll actually the third year and then the fourth year and then the five-year mark. I mean, we have a lot of – I have a lot of long-term plans. We're making we're making ripples in the water. People are trying to find are starting to find out about us even more so. I mean, we went from 30 members to 70 members, but um, 70 quality members who show up, they love what we do, and you constantly got to engage. You got you constantly got to keep engaging with your members. You have to. You have to. They they believe in you. They go to you for a service. You got to provide above and beyond service. So that's how you keep the gym open. That's how you keep the gym open for at least two years. I, I will, we, I will make, once I hit my third year, I will make another video in the third year. But, um, right now I'm just constantly <laughs> just making these fitness business videos. It's like a passion of mine. So, um, that is it for today. This is coach Austin from hyper strength and conditioning. If you guys have any other questions, you know, related to fitness business, you know, opening a gym, all that fun stuff. Let me know. You can email me or you can comment or whatever. Um, I think the next video I'm going to be talking about, uh, going over like workouts, for a gym, what you're trying to do, uh, what kind of workouts you can go to, what, what I've seen have been very successful in not just my gym, but other gyms, and what, what's the kind of growing trends right now. So I'll, that's my next video. I'll probably make that the next two weeks or so. So if you guys like this, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'm not going to do this whole spiel thing. and just You all know what to do. You smash all the damn buttons and all that. But thank you guys. It's Coach Austin from uh, San Jose, California. Hyper Strength Edition. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.